What's going on, guys? Welcome back to WWB Network and Show, where I, Graham G.S. and Matthews, break down all the original content I watch on the WWB Network and on Peacock. And today we're talking the Steiner Diner edition of Table for Three, just dropped this weekend. Um, I still have more old content to cover from the last episode of WWE Evil on Roman Reigns and two more episodes of Broken Skull Sessions that I've yet to get to on Sami Zayn and Charlotte Flair. Those will both be up at some point in the next couple of weeks. I'm hoping to break down the uh, Sami Zayn Broken Skull Sessions tomorrow, so keep an eye out for that. Um, but before then, though, I did want to take a break from that stuff and watch this episode of Table for Three from Friday. Uh, this was great. 22 minutes in length, Gavin, the entire Steiner family, Rick, Scott, Braun, Breaker, from WrestleMania weekend, they, they confirmed at the beginning of the episode, as I assumed was the case, uh, they filmed this over Mania weekend, only making the rounds now, like five months later, because that's usually what they do. They tape a whole bunch of content over Mania weekend, like Table for Threes, and get a bunch of talking heads that are in the area anyway, obviously. Obviously, Rick and Scott were there for the Hall of Fame ceremony, which is what they uh, talk about here. This was filmed before the Hall of Fame because Rick mentioned that he was excited for the Hall of Fame ceremony, which we see pictures of and some footage from at the beginning of this episode. Uh, Braun Breaker discusses his favorite matches of uh, Rick's and of Scott's growing up. Rick said he wouldn't change in anything about his career. Uh, they both talk, Rick and Scott, that is, talk about being in Japan and the culture over there. Scott said he hated the food. He had to make or buy his own Tuna or something like that? I don't know, but it was it was a great fucking line that he was mentioning, just shitting on Japan. Rick actually said he also did not like the culture to start, but he ended up, you know, kind of warming up to Japan and liking it after a while, liking the culture and whatnot. Did not like the long flights, though. We mentioned that it would take 14 hours to get there, so very understandable they would not be a fan of that. And they talk about fans clapping over there as opposed to, like, yelling or screaming or cheering. I mean, I guess they would cheer and they still do cheer, but clapping is kind of more in their culture over in the Japan wrestling audiences compared to here. Um, Scott talks about how Rick really talks about, actually, that Scott really pushed him, kept him focused, kept him innovative in the ring, really pushing him to be the best version of himself that he could in the ring. Um, Scott talking about he, Scott talks about how he started his career working with Dick the Bruiser, learning from him. He also learned from Jerry Lawler in Memphis before going to the NWA from there. Um, he recalls once getting a paycheck for $10. Uh, Rick started his career, I believe, and recalls his times in the AWA, Mid-South, and they talk about how they would travel like between 150 and 200 miles a night. And that was around the time they met Sting, befriended him, and they didn't really start making real money, like around $50,000, which was a lot. I mean, it's still a lot now, but um, a lot back then, most certainly, when Ted Turner bought out Jim Crockett. And it was really at that point they knew they were making actual money in the business. Um, they talk about how Scott and Randy Savage were actually really good friends. They drove on the road a lot. And Scott tells this story about how they were in the road one time and they had a competition of calling cows and who the cows would come to first. Scott yelled at them first, thinking they would come to the first person that yelled to them. They didn't. Randy said something. Three cows came running over, which I thought was a great fucking story. They would also race for lunch, too. Like, the loser would pay for lunch, which was just hysterical as well. I don't know if he was talking about, like, cars or, like, running or whatever, but they would run. I, I, I assume, obviously, he's talking about running because he mentioned that he was you know, they were racing backwards and sideways and all this other sort of stuff. And also he made the comment about the cows that he thought Randy knew the cows because they came immediately to him, which was a great line from Scott. They talk about the differences in pay between now and back then and how back then, if only five people came to the show, then you were getting paid based on the house, based on how many people came to the event. Uh, whereas now it's like guaranteed money and it's a big stage like WWE. Far different situation back in the day. Breaker praises the Performance Center in NXT and how they only really recruit the best of the best athletes in the world and that whole process. Um, I guess he talked trash to Scott as a kid when he was like a couple of years old and they joked that, I, I, I don't know if this is a joke or not actually, that he started riding a bike at one years old. I can't imagine that was the case, but he did excel at football and baseball and I think he got obvious. He, I, I think he wanted to go farther with the baseball career, a big fan of both those sports, a lot like with wrestling, but... Just with baseball, the opportunities, I guess he said, weren't there. But with football, he did it in college and also got drafted to the Ravens before arriving in WWE, I think just last year, actually. Uh, Breaker claims to have invaded the, uh, to have invented the Frankensteiner. He says that he innovated the Frankensteiner when he was a kid, when, when he was doing it on Scott and, and Rick and whatever, and they kind of break each other's balls, no pun intended, Rick or uh, Scott and Braun, that is. And uh, as far as why he's not using the Steiner name, they just outright call him out for it here. 
Like, why aren't you using the Steiner name? Not like angrily, but they were curious. Like, why not call yourself Steiner? And he said, listen, I came up with the name Braun, or specifically Breaker, because I think his name is, um, is it Bronson? Is his name actually Bronson? I don't remember, but uh, he came up with the Breaker name from football, and he felt like he didn't need the Steiner last name to be successful. And I, you know what, what he, he said that a lot in interviews. I think I might've been actually the first person that he told him that to in an interview about late last year, right before war games. And he shared that and how, you know, the whole, cause we've been wondering for once, why is he, we had been wondering for months, why is he not being called Braun Steiner or, you know, Rex Steiner or whatever. And that was, I guess why, um, he had told that story to me. He told that story to a lot of people. And I mean, it's, it sounds genuine. It sounds like that was actually the case. I don't know if the performance center though, wanted him to use the last name of Steiner. I would love to know if Sean Triple H or whoever in WWE pushed him to use Steiner. And then he said, no, I feel like they told him, we need you to get a new last name. And then he was like, uh, let's just use breaker in that case. So I, I still don't know what the case is, but it makes it sound like he was the one who pushed to use breaker over Steiner. That would be my assumption based on what he said here. Um, but Rick and Scott joke that uh, he stole all their moves. He won't use the last name, but he will stole he will steal all of their moves from the Frankensteiner to you know the camel clutch and everything else, um, except for the face plant. They bust his balls with the face plant in the Halloween Havoc NXT Championship match with Tommaso Ciampa last October, where he was coming off the top rope and completely fucking face plant right on the mat. It was a bad botch, and I think it led right into the finish soon after. And they say, you know, Breaker says, oh, surely you, you know, messed up once or twice. And I think both of them said, nope, never did, never face planted, which was funny. As far as where he is in his career, Rick asks him, like, are you content with where you are? What are your thoughts in your career? Breaker says, listen, I'm never content with where I'm at. I'm not content with where I'm at. Um, Any athlete should not be content with where they're at. And I just want to be better. Rick said he's proud of him and his success and He's harsh on him, and he kind of is uh, very critical of him, I guess, over the phone when he asks him for when he asks him for advice, because he wants to see his son be better. And Braun knows he needs to be better, and that he wants to get better. Um, Scott says, "You think you know it all when you first break into the business, but you don't." Uh, Rick advises him to stay humble, advising Braun to stay humble. That is, and that he didn't really know what he was doing until like 10, 12 years in. That that first decade or so, first decade or a dozen years, he thought he knew what he was doing. In reality, he definitely did not, he says. But Breaker said that he learned a lot working with Ciampa, learned a lot working with Sami Zayn and Dolph Ziggler, who uh, Scott brings up, as well as Robert Roode. And uh, Steiner obviously worked a lot with Roode in TNA for the few years they were there for it together. I mean, Roode, uh, Steiner was there for a while, actually. Steiner came into TNA in, in what, the late, 2000s. I started watching in 08, uh, but he was there a few years before that. I don't know if they actually ever had a pay-per-view match. I don't remember, but, you know, Rude left in 2016, I think, and Steiner was there until like 2012, late 2011, 2012, I think. So uh, they were in the same company for quite a while, but he says Rude was a good dude, except for the fact that he's Canadian, which uh, got a pop out of May. Rick says that all moves have been done before. They talk about the Frankensteiner, and Scott claims to have done a 450 splash on Dick the Bruiser back in 86, and Braun Breaker does not believe him. Uh, Breaker recalls winning his first NXT championship back in New Year's Evil in January of this year, and it was an extra special moment having his dad there with him to celebrate um, that night, which was a really cool moment. They didn't do it on air, but they did do it after the fact, which was still something. Uh, Rick enjoyed being back in the, you know, in, in the wrestling business after being a, away for a very long time. He mentioned that um, as far as Rick goes and, and why he stopped wrestling, he wrestled for a little while after he left WWE and WCW and did some stuff in Japan. But beyond that, he felt like he needed to take the next step in his life. As far as Scott, they don't really get into his history in the business as far as where he went after WWE. And, and this marks his first WWE-related appearance, I think since 04 or 05, he mentioned that was when he was last in the company. I think he left the company or was released or whatever back in 2005 and went to TNA soon after. They don't mention that. They don't mention that he continued. I mean, I think they kind of make a slight reference and you can't really hear it, but Rick says something like to the, to the degree of like, oh yeah, you continue to wrestle and I didn't. Uh, Scott still wrestles today. I mean, he wrestled for TNA for, for quite a while, like I said, up until like 2012, 2013. Didn't do anything in any major promotions, and he's been back in TNA on and off for like the last 10 years, and he went back a bunch. 
um, on various occasions, and he was there as recently as, uh, I think, a few years ago. He was also involved in the NWA and obviously just went to the Hall of Fame. I think he was actually at a fucking show here, like an indie show here in Connecticut a couple days ago from when I'm recording this. So, you know, great to see Scott still out and about despite the fact he had a very serious, I think, heart issue uh, a few years ago. So at least he's doing okay, which is good. They don't talk about that here, but I assume he's doing well if he's still wrestling. But anyway, as far as what Breakers, you know, as far as this being what he wanted to do, this was always what he wanted to do, he said. And with football and baseball, he enjoyed the sports, but wrestling was really where his heart was always uh, kind of uh, placed, he mentioned. And he congrats Rick and Scott on their Hall of Fame induction and on, on having legendary careers, calls them the greatest tag team in wrestling history. And <laughs> Scott jokes that he wants money every time Breaker uses his shit. That's what he says. Uh, great shit here. This was 22 minutes long. Well worth the watch. Um, I had high hopes for this when they announced this earlier in the week on Twitter, and it definitely delivered very entertaining stuff from the Breaker Boys, from the Steiner Boys, Rick Scott and Braun Breaker himself. Uh, great shit here on Peacock, so like I said, check it out when you get a chance. Hopefully they do more of this stuff in the future. We haven't had a new table for three in a little while. I think they may have done one like a month or so ago, actually. I think the Bo- the Bone Street Crew one was great. The Rhea, Zelina, Bianca one was good as well. Sure, but good. I think that dropped last month. The Bone Street Crew one might have been two months ago. So at least they're getting more original content up on the network. Because for a while, they weren't doing shit. They weren't doing anything. We haven't had a new 24 in a very long time. Uh, We had Evil, but that was around WrestleMania time. We still have Broken Skull Sessions once a month, except for this month. I don't think they've done one in September, uh, which is weird. You would think they would have dropped one around like Labor Day weekend around Clash of the Castle, but I don't. I think the Charlotte one was the last one, and that was last month, so I don't know what's on the horizon for that, and hopefully we see more Broken Skull Sessions soon, Uh, but nonetheless, you know, check out all my other reviews of all that other content on Peacock, including Broken Skull Sessions, WWE Evil, more reviews with that stuff coming uh, this week and beyond here on the channel, so if you haven't already, please subscribe, a lot of content coming up here on the channel uh, that's already gone up in the last couple of weeks, I've had more time to really published stuff that I haven't had a chance to put up yet, like interviews and content like this, miscellaneous shit. So if you haven't already subscribed, please do so. You're never going to want to miss a video. Uh, That being said, guys, have a great rest of your weekend, week, whatever it might be. I'm Graham G.S. Matthews, and I'll catch your ass down the road.